YouTube, Ed here with Jack of All Trades. So uh, I've got gas in the welder, I've got the rear axle, I've got the rear wheels, I've got the front wheels, I've got everything I need to get this frame for this go-kart into a roller configuration. So that's what we're gonna do today is we're gonna try and make this thing into a roller. But before we get too far into that project, I just wanted to uh, clear up a little something. Uh, I am not related to the actor or nor did I play the part of Mr. Edwards from Little House on the Prairie. Just wanted to clear that up for you all right now. Uh, the other thing is if you like this channel and if you like the content that we're doing here, please go to the bottom and hit the, hit the like and subscribe button, ding that notification bell so that you get notified of upcoming videos. And uh, please comment in the comment section if you like what we're doing. I look forward to your comments. I like your comments. Uh, the more comments, the more likes, the more subscriptions we get, the more we can grow the channel, which is what we're trying to do here. So enough talking, let's go ahead and get the front wheels on this thing and let's start mocking up the rear axle. All right, so we got basically, I just lightly put on the front wheels. I didn't tighten anything down. This is basically the, the stance I wanna have for the go-kart. Now we just have to mount up or figure out some way to mount up the rear axle. And I think I know how I want to do that. So uh, let me relocate the camera so you can come down here and we can see what we're gonna do. All right, so we've got, I'm gonna use pillow block bearings. And I basically need to have some way to mount these pillow block bearings. So this is gonna be a relatively easy thing. I just need to bring a tube out here to mount the pillow blocks. And you can see they're wider than one inch. So I'm gonna to have to double up my tube on the bottom. And then I'm gonna to have to bring it up here somewhere to brace it. So the first thing I'm gonna to have to need to do is see about how long my, my horizontal member is gonna to have to be and then we can kind of roughly figure out what the vertical member is going to be. And I'm going to try to do a, a backwoods garage bend on the tubing. Uh, I don't have a tubing bender, but there is a way that you can bend tubing. It's just a little more labor intensive. So let's take a couple of quick measurements and let's see about how long we need to make these, these pieces of steel. Looks like I want at least eight inches on the horizontal. And of course it's gonna do that. And it looks like I want about five and a half inches on the vertical. So we'll cut them a little long and tr trim one side to size and then uh, make the other side to match. All right, so I got my piece of tubing here and we're gonna cut off a piece about 16 inches or a little better than and We're gonna have to trim it to size. So I, I wanna give myself a little extra length so we'll go, we'll go 16 and a half just to play it safe. And since I don't have a bandsaw, you've seen me do this before. All right, so now we gotta make a bend. 
So I need that bend to start right around seven or eight inches. This isn't, we're not building the space shuttle here, so we don't have to be too critical. So somewhere around the vicinity, I want to make a bend. And the easiest way to make a bend that I have found so far without a bender is to make a series of cuts and then you can then you can bend it once those cuts have been made and then re-weld it. Okay, that's enough. That'll give it a nice shape. So now we got to weld that back up. got a bent tube so now I just have to make another one just like it and I'm not going to bore you with those details so I will cut the camera off and I'll go make another one all right I've got the two axle braces uh, made and they're pretty doggone close and they're pretty good for rural work anyway so now what I have to do is the pillow blocks are wider than an inch and this is one inch tubing so the leg that's going to hold the pillow blocks I got to double them up in width so I'm just going to cut two more pieces of straight tubing, 
just weld them directly to this. That'll give me a two inch width. The pillow blocks are an inch and a half wide. I'll have to drill a hole through the middle and we'll uh, have a place to mount the bolts. So let's go ahead and get that done. So the holes are drilled, pillow block will go right there, one half inch bolt to bolt them down, and I got some room for adjustment. So we should be all right. That should work out really good. So now we got to put these arms on. I actually made a mistake when I was building these. Uh, I didn't originally cut this one long enough. I cut it too short. And I wanted it to extend it all the way to this post. <clears throat> so off camera, I went ahead and just I welded on another piece. That's the beauty of metal. You just screw up, you can always just weld on another chunk. So need to come down about five and a half inches. Right there. That'll about do it. And then let's put a mark and let's put a mark. All right, let's get her tacked into place. So I got the axle brackets welded on, or tacked actually I should say. Now we just need to, before we get too crazy with any welding, we need to take a few measurements to ensure that everything's going to line up right. Now I know I need 10 inches of stick out on each side of my axle. Okay, I'm equal on both sides. Now if you'll remember, I squared the front axle off of this mark right here. Now I'm going to square the rear axle and I'm just checking to see if it will square. Uh, I haven't bolted anything down yet. I just need to know if where we're sitting right now, if I can get the axle square. 
So coming from this mark, I'm 33 and a quarter inches. 33 and a quarter inches right on the money. So I can square this axle the way the the way these brackets are sitting right now. So it is it is possible to get this axle square. got the wheels on and as you can very clearly see I did my made of another mistake but it's an easily fixable mistake Brucey come here so you can see the back is lower in the front rake of the vehicle is is butt low nose high and the reason for that is is because I got the pillow blocks on the wrong side of the on the wrong side of the braces I got to put them on the bottom instead of the top so that's an easy easily fixable thing uh, I just have to take the rear axle off, take the pillow blocks and put them underneath instead of on top. So I'm gonna undersling them instead of oversling them and that'll give me the right rake. All right, my mistake has been corrected. I got the pillow blocks on the bottom of the frame now instead of the top and the back end of the machine is now about one inch higher than the front, which is exactly the way I wanted it. So uh, that was a time consuming mistake, but we got it fixed up and you gotta get it you got to get it mocked up correctly. Well, that's probably enough for this video. We've got the rear axle mounted, uh, everything tacked into place. Everything's good to go as far as the rear axle is concerned. Uh, the next video, we will probably mock up the brake caliper and the brake master cylinder. Somewhere somebody told me that brakes are a good thing to have. Uh, I guess we'll put some on this one. And we'll probably lengthen out that steering shaft and get that steering shaft. We might even start dabbling a little bit on prepping the engine to put the engine in. Uh, we're getting really close. Every time we do a video, we're, we're getting one step closer to actually getting this thing uh, under power and we'll get a test drive on it and then we're gonna have to rip it apart and paint it and reassemble everything again. So Ed here with Jack of All Trades. If you like what you see here, please hit that like and subscribe button. Give me some comments, give me some feedback, anything you'd like to see, any questions you might have and I'll answer them as best as I possibly can. And we will see you on the next video.